okay, full drivetrain power loss. It says out of energy, charge vehicle now. It told me there's no powers. So there's an embankment, it's a little steep, but I think if I take it at the right angle, I can get on the frontage road and that's better than being on the highway. So <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. Oh boy, out of spec style. I'm hoping not to get stuck on the frontage road. This video is brought to you by Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. This video is also brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. I'm Max. I'm normally on the Out of Spec Guy channel in case you don't recognize me, but I am joining you today to bring you to Wellington, Colorado, where we are running our 70 mile an hour highway range loop, this time with a Silverado EV. Deja vu, right? Because we've already done this. Well, Kyle did it with the 4WT on that day where they ran four trucks against each other. But we've also had this Hertz rental 3WT with us and so we figured we might as well test it as well, or at least I drew the short end of the stick. And while the boys on the track are uh, driving their trucks, Cybertruck, Rivian, and 4WT on the track, I am doing this today. So that's how it turned out. But anyhow, uh, what can we expect? Well, let me tell you all the specs of this truck, our range test procedures, the conditions today with the weather, what's going on after the intro. <laughs> All right, I'm inside the work truck because it's windy today. Unfortunately, it's like an 18 mile an hour southwest wind, nothing I can do about it. However, we do these range tests as a loop style to compensate for that. So how does our range test work? Well, it's a 70 mile an hour highway range test, constant acceleration, no big bursts. We try to avoid any traffic. There's no traffic at this time of day. We basically head north on I-25 and then we head east on I-80 and we turn around at about halfway. We run the truck until it's basically dead. Um, if you've seen this before, nothing new here. If you've seen the one with the 4WT, nothing new here. This one should probably just get about 25% less range because it is 25% less battery. That big 4WT that my colleague Ryan tested with Kyle the other day netted it about 215 kilowatt hours of energy put out, which equated to, in that case, 430 miles of range at 70 miles an hour. Today, I'm expecting to see around 360, but we'll see if I exceed that or if I underperform. Keep in mind, I don't have a tunnel cover unlike that truck did, so I might actually get a little bit less than 360 because proportionally, right, it is 25% less battery. Nerd talk here, we're talking about 20 Ultium modules in this truck versus 24 in their truck. So they should, uh, the 4WT has around like 216 kilowatt hours. This has about 180 kilowatt hours. Otherwise, standard procedures here, I'm running the climate control at 68 degrees, medium fan speed just for comfort, normal setting. Uh, there's no eco setting on this truck. I'm gonna be just driving normally, adaptive cruise control set to that, to 70 miles an hour, GPS corrected. On this, uh, on the tires here, we're just on stock rims, the work truck rims, the ones that are actually a bit better for aerodynamics as opposed to the RST, which is the more consumer oriented Silverado EV that we don't have. Uh, but yeah, we've got those stock rims, stock Bridgestone tires, which are set to their manufacturer spec of 61 PSI. I just checked that on my way over to the charger. And I have top charge, so I am at 100% and the is showing 375 miles. Now keep in mind that takes in mind driving history. I'm gonna get less than 375 miles, I think a little less because I'm going 70 miles an hour, which is higher than I've been driving the last few miles with this boy. Anyhow, is that enough procedure for you? If I missed anything, I'll put it in text. Um, it's been a long week for us all out of spec. We've got a lot of work with these trucks, but I hope you enjoy this range test. I'll make it as interesting as possible as I can for you. Cause if you're interested in renting a 3WT from Hertz or you're a work contractor and you can actually order one of these, well, this is gonna be important for you. So let's show you how far you can go not towing anything at 70 miles an hour on the highway. All right, time to reset our trip data since we're fully charged and ready to um, hit the road. So let's reset trip one. Yep. And trip one has been reset. All right, so we're at zero miles on trip one. Odometer is starting now. So I'm going to shift this puppy into drive and off we go onto our 70 mile an hour highway loop style range test.
Hitting the highway, green lights all around, we can keep momentum great. Because in this test, we try not to have sudden bursts of acceleration, uh, anything to spike the pack cells and basically just have disproportionate consumption. We're trying to keep it even, steady, and nice and slow, just like you might if you were trying to maximize every mile possible, but still trying to go 70 miles an hour. Here, unfortunately, we do have a red light. Today's conditions are pretty nice. It's like 70 degrees. There is, like I said, winds. I misspoke earlier in the intro. They're not 20 miles an hour. Those are the gusts. The constant wind speeds around 13 miles an hour from a westerly direction. So not too bad wind today. And of course, we are doing this as a loop. Uh, so we are compensating for that wind because it's basically constant for the two or three hours I'll be driving today. But it's the real world. So there's always some variability. So that's why I introduced these conditions to you. Anyhow, here I am gradually merging onto 25, getting to a 70 mile an hour speed when I can safely. Uh, so unfortunately, we do have a little bit of traffic getting on the highway, but that should clear up very quickly. So I'm just going to stay with you here as I leisurely accelerate to 70 miles an hour. Once I do get to 70 miles an hour, which we have GPS verified with this truck, I will put it on cruise control. So I'm at about 70 miles an hour now, and I will go on cruise control now, and it is set. Now, this is an adaptive cruise control system. There's no lane centering. I will be manually steering this truck for four hours or three hours, whatever this is. You're welcome. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Uh, this is gonna be longer than three hours, isn't it? I'm just changing the math now, 70 miles an hour. Yeah, this should be <laughs> between three and four hour test. Uh, not as long as Ryan had to hold up the other day, but man, this will be quite an interesting one. So can't wait to see how we do. I will update you further down the road just to give you an idea at the beginning here at 70 miles an hour as we're cruising so far, I'm consuming about 45 kilowatts continuously uh, to stay at that speed. Of course, that changes as you can see it just spiked to 50 um, with elevation wind all of these things affect EV range as you may have learned watching these tests I'll update you once there's uh, more news to follow not to sound like too much of a city bumpkin but it's always funny these range tests you know we're going through northern Colorado into Wyoming Nebraska this is ranch country there's ranch things and there's ranch smells. Normally, I don't smell those ranch smells because like if I'm driving, let's say my personal car, Polestar 2 or a Lucid Air, whatever we may be range testing, typically the cabin air filters and those uh, filter that out. But here, we're in a good old American work truck and I can smell every cow pie and uh, everything for miles here. So I'm feeling a little bit more immersed in the American heartland. Uh, and I guess that's just what happens when you drive a work truck. So. I also wear my flannel today just for that reason, but just thought I'd comment on that. Just passing the truck weighing station because we have crossed the Colorado state border. We're well into Wyoming now and we're only at 90% big battery things, huh? We've averaged 1.4 miles a kilowatt hour of efficiency on this trip in our 28 miles thus far. We're still on 25. We have a few miles to go before we switch over to I-80, but we've been holding a consistent 70 mile an hour speed with uh, basically no traffic so far, which is great. I'm a little bit worried because it's 2.38 right now. So if I'm finishing in like three hours-ish, then there may be some rush hour coming back uh, south, but I'm hoping not. We'll just have to find out. But yeah, so far, conditions are holding steady. Wind doesn't seem to be too bad. And uh, we're just trucking along, literally, in the Silverado EV work truck. So yeah, clearly a lot going on here in uh, Wyoming at the moment. But we are heading east, 84% battery remaining. We have traveled just about 59 miles. And our efficiency has climbed back up to 1.9 miles a kilowatt hour. I think it should average to 2 miles a kilowatt hour on this trip because heading back, we should be facing two bad winds and we should be going down in elevation. So we're doing okay so far, just cruising along, coasting, making this big 8,200 pound truck um, just, you know, cruise down. And honestly, it's not a bad road tripper. I mean, I drove this thing with uh, some friends across the country in our out of spec race for uh, the motoring channel. And uh, here it's also at home. It's just, you know, cruising very, very comfortably. We're at 69% battery, nice. Uh, we're about to intersect with the town of Potter in Nebraska. We've traveled 130 miles with an efficiency of 2.2 miles a kilowatt hour. Now, that's gone up a bit. I think that's a bit high because 
we have drop elevation. We also have like a 12 mile an hour tailwind at our back. So when you consider that, then I think we probably want to turn around somewhere approaching 58% if possible. Uh, so that will be my goal uh, because we are definitely, I'm thinking consume more energy on the return. Like given that we're only consuming like 20 kilowatts at the moment to go 70 miles an hour. I think that's just really being helped out by the wind and the fact that it's either flat or slightly descending. But yeah, I mean, fairly uneventful trip so far. The truck is just hauling. I think we may be on track for, by this math, um, a 400 mile range potentially. Now, we'll see. I th I'm thinking it'll be a bit less, but initially I was thinking like, oh, 360 miles of range. I think we might exceed that by a little bit. Okay, the headwind that we're gonna face coming back is getting stronger. Uh, Kyle just sent me an update from the Windy app and it's not looking good. We're looking at 20 to 25 mile an hour headwinds coming back. So I'm gonna turn around a little bit early at like 60%. So I'm basically gonna take the next exit out of here somewhere in the beginning of Duell County in Nebraska. Uh, and get turned around because I'm yeah these headwinds will be fierce so we'll see if this will be one of those range tests where I just you know loop around the charger or whether I'm limping and uh, stranded but either way not a huge deal can always get the Rivian and the diesel generator out to save me so we'll see how far I go. We'll take this deceleration, slow and easy. Same thing, importantly, for our acceleration out once we spit back out west on the highway. Big regen in the Silverado EV. Love the GM tells you the kilowatts you make. We've actually seen in this one uh, numbers, I think approaching like 310, uh, no, sorry, 320 kilowatts of regenerative braking in the bigger battery 4WT, I think that goes to 400. Pretty insane stuff. But anyhow, let's turn around, head back west. Keeping like, again, everything nice and gradual with all our speed changes. Merge it back to speed at a nice constant rate. Building back up to 70 miles an hour. Wow, that headwind is not a lie. <laughs> we get it back at the 2.3. I think we're gonna drop back down to like 1.9, maybe even 1.8 uh, as we round this out. So into the headwind we go. Oh, oh boy. Okay, uh, let's set cruise control at 70 miles an hour. What's that gonna take to maintain? Oh, oh yeah, that's gonna take at least 50 to maintain, especially as we start climbing. So um, I'll keep you posted on how it's going. Just ticked over to 50% battery. Of course, we're still on our return leg, heading back uh, west, and then we'll be south on 25. Uh, 196 miles of travel so far. So we're on track for somewhere in the neighborhood of like 370, 380 miles, though I think that might decline further because as you can see, in a short distance, I mean like 20 miles since turning around, our efficiency has nosedived. It's gone from 2.3 average for the whole trip to 2.1 miles a kilowatt hour. So quite a substantial decline. And that's to be expected because again, we're facing this headwind and we've got about like 1,100 more feet of elevation to make up in this distance. So Silverado hanging in there, hoping this is not gonna have to be a one where we're stranded on I-25. That is a meaty looking cloud in the distance and that's what we're heading back to. So maybe that's part of the currents or uh, weather cycle for this headwinds. I don't know how meteorology works. Maybe someone who does can comment, but that's a fat cloud. Wow. Still about, I think like 50 miles from Cheyenne um, before basically, right, we turn to go back south towards Colorado and uh, Wellington, but efficiency is just already nose diving down to 1.9 miles a kilowatt hour. We are just fighting this brutal headwind. Semi trucks are passing us. Um, and yeah, 32% battery. We've traveled 240 miles. So looking like we'll make it about 350 miles, maybe a little bit less actually is my guess. Just depends on how brutal this headwind becomes as a crosswind once we turn to go 
south. Okay, just ticked down to 25%. So of course, cruising at 70 miles an hour, we are in Wyoming at this point and we're not far from Colorado. We're only 65, we're like 63 miles from the Wellington charge point, but we uh, have only 75 miles of range remaining. So it's actually gonna be kind of tight. I think we'll make it, it just, we'll have to make a pretty short radius loop is what I'm predicting. Now that range estimate, the gasometer could go up because hopefully we won't be facing those winds directly on once we turn to go south as we are now. You can see we've gone 260 miles just about and our efficiency is still trip average at 1.9 miles a kilowatt hour. I'll keep you updated as we turn south. Getting my first charge vehicle soon warning at 11%, 294 and a half miles down. And uh, I think we have, I don't know, like 25 miles left of the charger. So we're right about on target here. We're definitely going the frontage road because I don't think we'll be able to maintain highway speed by the time we get to the charger. Uh, but yeah, that's where we are at. Uh, I really wish this vehicle had super cruise or some form of lane centering. It has the lane departure, like ping pong thing, where it like will force you back in the lane if you leave the lines, but it will just drift in the lane. And with this wind, I actually do have to actively steer because we have quite the heavy crosswind at the moment. So um, that's where we are at the moment. Okay, I've got um, 17 miles to the charge point in Wellington. Sorry, 11 miles, 17 miles of range in the truck. So it's a six mile buffer, not too bad. It's giving me a few more warnings, but I still seem to have full power. Adaptive cruise control has not been disabled yet. I'm at 6%. I think around 5% it might start to disable. Maybe it's 3%. Uh, but yeah, we've traveled 310 miles. So we're on track to do like 330 today um, or a little bit less than that. Not exactly what we were expecting. Maybe the wind really did screw us a bit. It did get a little bit more intense. That said, we still did this test as a loop style. Um, but yeah, 330, 340, to be honest, would be right on target with being approximately 20% less than the 430 mile result from the 24 module pack. By the way, for those of you nerds asking, no, this car is not preconditioned to the charger because we're testing absolute range. So I'm not wasting excess battery preconditioning. I am just navigating to the charger with my own phone, but not the truck's infotainment system. That way we don't waste a spare watt hour. Okay, I just had adaptive cruise uh, engage and now it has reduced acceleration. So it looks like it's starting to power limit us at, now it just says low. It basically ticked over to 4% and now low is all it says, or sorry, low is what it says in lieu of range. It still says 4% battery. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't give us an exact range estimate anymore. I guess the pedal feels a bit squishier. I'm not pushing it too much. I am going above speed. Whoops, sorry, I'm filming at the same time. Turns out doing these things at the same time is a lot. Um, merging back. Yeah, so let's gently get back down to the speed we need after we pass the semi. Um, so yeah, now I've got to just be careful with my right foot, keep it to 70 miles an hour, which we still should be able to do for another little bit. And I'm taking one of the next exits. So I will update you as I am uh, basically looping on the highway again. I think I've got enough energy to do another four mile loop. Famous last words. Kyle seems confident that I won't need to take the frontage road. So uh, yeah, we'll see if that's a smart idea. We are approaching the end of what I would describe as most normal people's comfortable usable range. Now I can still maintain 70 miles an hour, but I'm definitely noticing some power limiting in that pedal there. Uh, and I'm also having to be a bit under because there's a truck right in front of me, but I'm taking this exit to do Wellington. Then we're going to loop here. I've approached, uh, I've done so far 320 miles, averaging 1.7 miles a kilowatt hour. Uh, and we're at 3% according to the battery management system. So let's give her another loop and see if uh, we don't end up stranded. I think we should be fine to do like another at least four to six miles um, at highway speeds. Let's see though. Yeah, worst case, let's just consider this real world range of 320 miles. That's still pretty good, but I think we can go a bit further um, looping around here. Now, Kyle said he was maintaining 80 miles an hour at 2% the other day, at least in the 4WT. Maybe he was talking about this one, I don't know. Uh, so, I think we know it's possible. So, um, yeah, looks like I can get to 70, takes a little bit of resistance. I can't use adaptive cruise anymore, so I'm doing this all with my right foot the old fashioned way. 
But um, yeah, here we go. We're just at about 70 miles an hour. There we are. It's kind of hard to find that point with my foot at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna stay, staying as close to it as I can. Um, yep, and I will just take basically another exit uh, to do another four mile loop. That's my goal here. No frontage roads, we're sticking to the highway as long as possible for you because we can. 322 miles now, let's keep going. Okay, I think I should have taken that last exit I just skipped over. Uh, six, 324, 325 miles, 1% battery. I am almost foot to the floor at 60 miles an hour. I'm afraid we're gonna have to pull over and get the Rivian to charge us because I don't know when the next exit is. Um, but we are approaching dead, like dead, dead, dead. So yeah, it's, uh, it's cutting power. So I'm at 60 miles an hour now. So 70 mile an hour portion of this test is effectively done here at around 325 miles. Okay, full drivetrain power loss. It says out of energy, charge vehicle now. It told me there's no powers. There's an embankment, it's a little steep, but I think if I take it at the right angle, I can get on the frontage road and that's better than being on the highway. So <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. Oh boy out of spec style. I'm hoping not to get stuck on the frontage road. And I'm stuck just before the frontage road. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm blocking the road. Let me get out and make sure this is uh, safe. Oh, I've been instructed to pop open the front trunk, turn off all loads. Kyle's on his way. Um, but for those of you curious, oh, I'm gonna have to start the vehicle to view vehicle status. Can I start the vehicle? Um, that just happened. Good thing I popped the frunk. Um, so we're dead. Uh, whatever you saw in the last clip is the mileage we got. I think I had it on the troop meter. We're dead, dead. We ran the Silverado 3WT quite dead in the ridge test. I made it off I-25 trying to get to the frontage road for safety and I literally lost drivetrain power here. Uh, Kyle's on his way with a generator and we'll get back and going here shortly, but yep. Kyle is on his way with the Rivian and the diesel generator and our cool Autel Minion uh, 40 kilowatt DC fast charger. So hopefully we can get some charge in the truck once he shows up. And I've got an emergency snack here that I didn't even know about until now. I just found out there's a nice cinnamon roll in here. I will absolutely get sticky fingers if I start eating this, but good to know if worst comes to worst, I've got a survival strategy because it is howling out there. Winds are brutal, um, but luckily we are in a safe place and I have a cinnamon roll. Here comes the Rivian with the generator and fast charger in tow. They're on their way here. Alrighty. Okay, we're taking a different tack just to make sure the cable reaches. He's actually going to back in. Now this is a little bit steeper than it looks, so we don't want to mess around too much with the trailer and the fast charger, which is not secured super well. Uh, so I think the best angle attack might just be staying as close to the road as possible. Okay, we parked the right way, generator is going. I've got the cable ready to go. Highway screaming, but we're fine here. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Got power. Now it's available. Plug it in, brother. Alrighty. Can you hold the flashlight? Yeah, of course. Here, I'll leave your phone. Yeah. Alrighty. Let me come on over. Uh, the audio for this might be. The audio. You might have to voice this over, Max. <laughs> okay. All right. She's in. Will it accept the charge? Yeah. Uh, this might be the issue we had earlier with Ryan's truck. Safety oh wait, it made it through! So <laughs> it's gonna charge! It's gonna be finicky, I suppose, is because the battery has to re-put itself into the configuration for uh, high voltage charging. Yes, it does, because this is up to 920 volts, this charger, I think. Right. Or 950, actually. When it drives, it's only half that voltage. 
Yes. <laughs> Initiating charge. Come on. Let's go. This shouldn't be hard. Charge. I've never seen it get stuck here, Max. Oh, boy. Made it this far. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, just give it one second. Yep. I would agree, charge station is not sending power. <laughs> it's charging. Max, we just started charging. <laughs> so it's going to sit at 20 kilowatts for one minute, and then it'll boost up to 40. Uh, but at least it's accepting a charge. How sick is this? This is awesome. It's amazing. I mean, this is the minimum of what you want because three kilowatts or whatever level two would be painful. Yeah, it would be unbelievably terrible. So the, the battery this big, dude, you're far away from the station. You definitely went one too far. <laughs> yeah, I got you're too like, confident. Yeah, you're like eight or ten miles from the station. Yeah, no, there was the the last one was four miles ago. The last exit. Yeah, I, I should have taken that's that. That's the one you should always take. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're wrapping up forty kilowatts. So we're just going to sit here and <laughs> look, it says over four hours to charge. That's how oh, big the battery is. Yeah, because it's 100% limit. Yep. So we're just going to go to, I guess, 10%. 10%. 10%. Yeah, because yeah. we tried uh, 2% on Brian's and it wouldn't let it go into gear. Okay. So we'll at least get it to 10. We'll be here for a while, but a buffer, we'll yeah. proof watch the video. Yep. The road trip video. Yep. All right, so we've got the Autel Charger dashboard pulled up. Yes, and it is so cool. There's so much. This is the first time I'm really digging into this, uh, but this is the real time status of charging. So you can see we started at 20 kilowatts, and then, you know, the second module came online right over here and it just sat. But what's interesting, of course, is that your back voltage was so low uh, that as you're gaining state of charge, the amperage is decreasing, but the total power of the charger is staying the same. And they're just refreshed on us. We're now at, what SOC are we at? 4%. And you can see dead voltage was 477 volts right there. And keep in mind, that is with the pack doubled. So we would have to look at, let's just get the exact number, 477 divided by two while you were driving, you were at 238 volts. That right. was the operating voltage. Wow. Well, yeah, right at the bottom. And maybe even like when you were moving and sagging the pack. So you were down. So no low. wonder it didn't want to move that 8,200 pound thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were just dead. Uh, but now, of course, the pack voltage, they come up pretty quick. You're all the way up at 550 now. Uh, and that happened within only 4%. So that is the, you know, it can really damage a lithium cell when they're that low. Um, and they put, you know, bottom voltage protections in there, but they basically will just run away to zero. And if yeah. you get them too low, uh, it could be damaged for a long time. Something like this actually doesn't really hurt the cell all that much. Yeah, it just, if we left it, I guess, overnight, and if we did this multiple times, I mean, I could tell as I was touching the pedal, obviously there's software control for that because I was getting down to 20 kilowatts, 15 kilowatts of power output, <laughs> and I'm like, yep, it does not want me to be going at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, really cool that we have this data right here. I absolutely love this. And uh, yeah, so now we're at 5%. We're halfway to getting us back to the charger. And so nice to have a DC charger on the back of our truck. This is great. Yeah, you might need it for the Rivian too. You were down at 7%. Yeah, honestly, I have charged this on the side of the road just to get it to a charger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell people on Facebook that. Yeah, I should be able to make it there. It's all downhill on the way back. Yeah. At least I hope. There is one climb though. Ordinarily, so. this truck's a lot more efficient than Silverado, but you've got a little okay, bit of a right. load. Yeah, exactly. Well, nice work, Max. That was good. Charge us back up to 13% thanks to him pulling up with the Rivian and the diesel generator and the Autel charger. So if I go to the trip monitor, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm driving. But basically, I got 329 miles, as you saw before. I completely stopped moving. Uh, so do I think this truck can do better? Yes. I think 70 mile an hour circumstances, they were okay today. We kept speed. We didn't have traffic. We had great weather in terms of temperature. We just had terrible, brutal headwinds coming back that really got stronger um, as the afternoon went on. And that just killed everything. And I should have taken an exit earlier. Shouldn't have been so ambitious looping around the charger. Oh, well, say la vie. And uh, we get some good content out of it, as we always do it at a spec. And I'll update you with the charger and finish up this video. That was a fun day, but uh, Silverado 3WT has been put through many paces. This was just the lightest of its trials. Yeah, holy smokes, Max. You've driven this truck across the country. Yeah. We've now done charge tests. 
we've done range test 10 percent challenges i'm not sure in what order all this will go but um thanks hertz <laughs> it's work a great track. it's a great work truck and it's proven itself so 329 miles of range nominally that sounds disappointing we've got to consider today though headwinds were just brutal yeah so you you seem to have gotten the headwind without the benefit of a major tailwind you I definitely could, had some tailwind. yeah so you know that at the end of the day maybe it would have done another 10 more miles if conditions were totally perfect yeah and i did the math like let's say this is the 20 module pack versus ryan's 4wt with the 24 module it should be 20 percent less range right yeah. and 350 would have put it right on the money so oh, yeah. performed a bit worse i think a lot of it is just down to wind and timing and no tonneau cover and yeah no let's not forget that yeah so i mean i think the results are pretty consistent with what we were expecting out of this mm -hmm. um that's still serious highway range in the 20 module pack yeah uh, and what it means is that we we can pretty much run any gm product now with the big battery knock 20 percent off of it comfortably and say well that's what the one battery size down will do so escalate iq with the 20 module hummer ev with the 20 module these and whatever else they decide to do with big ass batteries it's good scaling i mean the discharge is impressive the charging i'm sure you'll go over it seems it's, to be so picky based off infrastructure that's its own story but once you get it once it <laughs> decides not to be picky anymore yeah it charges like a monster yeah it's crazy i mean it holds over 300 kilowatts this one yeah for like ever it's pretty wild case in point we pulled it in 10 percent. it's plugged into level two how many amps is this 48 amps 48 amps this is not a slow charger no. it's going to be done at 4 p.m tomorrow right it's not quite 24 hours but not far off <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> yeah. crazy yeah so yeah. 80 amp onboard chargers for those of you who want a big battery like this maybe consider a hummer or something that has the onboard charger. These, I think, will get them. You know oh, this has okay. a heat pump, by the way? Oh, that's cool. I and did not. heat scavenging. Yeah, wow. it's actually... Yeah. I, I didn't know that until I was testing this one last night, and I put the heat to high, and I heard... Zzz. I'm like, why is it running the AC? I'm like, no, it's got a heat pump. I looked it up. It's awesome. Lots of, honestly, really good engineering going on. My overall thoughts remain from the road trip. I think this is like 95% there towards being an awesome vehicle. There's just a few elements of, like, unpolished and downright dangerousness that yeah. makes me, like think maybe they should be selling them and i guess they're not really i mean the bugs on the charging alone and yeah. th and this one's on slightly earlier software than our test truck yeah so our 4wt ah that thing still has some bugs and once they get that sorted hopefully in the next few months by the time the customer ones go on sale because again you, these are only for fleet accounts mm -hmm. but fleet accounts are still people yeah um you know anyway i can't wait to test like the big boy rst on 24 inch wheels stay tuned for that anyways fun uh range test result here one more time for you 329 miles of usable range i would argue usable maybe a little bit less to be safe for normal people you on can the highway do 300 in any condition with this truck that's easy. how i look at that easy yeah. yeah anyways uh thanks for watching this one enjoy and see you in another out of spec video mm -hmm.